Welcome back and many thanks for staying with us right here on the best morning show in the country, Morning at NTV. My name is Romeo Busiku and of course we are getting into a very, very contentious conversation. Last week on Wednesday, yes, as presidential candidate for the National Unity Platform, Robert Chagulanyi was making his way to look at district, he was arrested. Now the chaos that ensued blanketed the whole country, at least those pockets where he has too much support. And we saw over 45 people getting killed. That's according to the results or the numbers that were updated by the police spokesperson, Fred uh, Enanga, that is yesterday. Very callous developments that are going to be dissected by the Center for Constitutional Governance Executive Director, Sara Birete, and also the CEO Agency for Transformation, that is Mr. Morrison Rakakamba. Will there be a replication of the same as we continue with this campaign trail up to January 12th. That's what we want to know. And how best can we stop this, uh, yes, this very, very, very callous activity of killing people in its midst. So, very good morning, lady and gentlemen. Good morning. Good morning, Grandma. Let me start with you, Sarah. What do you make of the events that uh, culminated into violence last week on Wednesday? And do you have that belief that if not, uh, you know, checked, we oh. might be he heading for another very, very bad situation as we continue with the presidential campaign trail? Well, the, the events that led to riots and protests in town were very unfortunate. Mm -hmm. they, they marked, I think, the height of, of failure of us as a nation to organize a hybrid election because arresting a presidential candidate mm -hmm. on a campaign trail which is official is the biggest mistake. And whoever made that order, I think, should apologize to the nation. Elections by nature are highly emotional. Mm -hmm. They are interactive. They are a people's process. So once the people are engaged in a campaign, anything you do to the person they support, mm -hmm. they are bound to act. Like they did. Yes. I, 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 and like, as expected, of so course. So these were they, not robbers, hooligans, uh, according to the statements coming in from government, who are just willing to loot? No, no, no. I, 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 will, I will come to that. <coughs> so the, the arrest of Honari uh, Bechagrani, mm. under the guise of, of, of you know, of, of COVID soaps, yes. mm. was very unfortunate. I, I want to underscore that point. Mm. By stating that 71 countries so far globally have held elections during COVID. Mm. And I don't think Uganda is an exception to what the other countries are doing in Africa and beyond. Yes. W of course, we have countries like Burundi and Tanzania who have ignored COVID. But I want to look at the good examples of Mali, Marawi, and the rest that have enforced COVID guidelines and saved lives. And the best example is South Korea. Unfortunately, it is out of the African scope. There was no single spike, no single infection of COVID after South Korea's elections in April this year. Mm -hmm. They followed all SOPs to the latter. But Mali and, uh, and, uh, Marawi and Ghana, and also uh, um, no, Ma Marawi and Mali, and Ghana, which is holding elections on 7th, 7th November is just two weeks from today. We have several examples to copy from on countries that are going on with their electro cycle and governance processes, but also preventing the spread of COVID. Mm -hmm. So what is expected in this, in this particular instant? Mm -hmm. If you say campaign rallies, the, 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 meet, the meetings are limited to 200 people, the role of security agencies and, and uh, maybe to, to also remind the viewers that presidential campaign programs are approved and harmonized by electoral commission in the presence of all security agencies. To enable the police and other related security agencies do their work. So once you have a schedule to say General Muntu will be in, in Chegegua in, on this day, and you know the number of people are supposed to be 200, the people should wash hands. The venues are known and approved to you prior. Forget the issue of police disorganizing candidates and canceling venues on the last minute. That is also uncalled for. So you know that candidate so and so will be in venue X and most of them are open air, which is very good. Also in line with World Health Organization guidelines on public gatherings. So somebody will be at this venue on this day 
go to the venue. Observe the soaps there. Do not observe, you know, do not claim to be observing soaps by, by hunting down candidates. That is what all the 71 countries are doing. Make sure there are provisions to wash hands. Make sure whoever enters is wearing a mask. Save for the unfortunate situation also to know that masses in the countryside do not have masks. When Parliament allocated 55 billion for every Ugandan adult aged six years and above, I have personally never received my mask. I do not know any member of my family who has ever received a government mask. I do not know any of the staff that I work with at CCG who has received a government mask. So I don't know who has received a government mask and what criteria they are so using. So are you telling us, Sarah Bireta, that the actions of the security apparatus had nothing to do with trying to ward off the contraction or the spread of COVID-19, but rather protecting a regime? You know, uh, you know we need to note that in the past two, two decades, th these are 20 years, mm. we have had violent elections in this country. We have not had COVID except for 2020. We have had arrests of presidential candidates on the opposition side. We have had harassment of opposition supporters. Were they observing COVID or failing to observe COVID guidelines? This is the usual harassment of opposition under the guise of observing COVID. Sara Birete, the executive director for the Center for Constitutional Governance. She's not alone. We also do have Mr. Morrison Rakakamba. He is the CEO Agency for Transformation. Mr. Rakakamba would like to know. Security Minister came at the tail end of last week, Mr. Eli Tumwini, yeah. and he did mention that, you know what? If you're a protester and you get out of hand, you will be shot again. He was actually justifying the actions of the security apparatus to shoot down over 45 people last week uh, during the chaos that ensued when Bobby Wine was arrested. Was, were they acting within the confines of the law when no. they were shooting these people? No, I, I think what uh, General Edith Mwine said, mm. I think in my view, uh, confused mm. operational mistakes uh, with institutional policy. Mm. Because I don't think our policemen or our security agencies wake up on a daily basis to hurt, harm, or torture any Ugandan. I think what happened was a situational, operational uh, challenge that got out of hand. That I think, you know, got out of hand uh, in that perspective and mistakes were made. Mm -hmm. And actually, my view on that is instead of, you know, appearing to appear, you know, macho, I, I think from the governmental side is that the managers of the security should be humble enough and say there were operational challenges. We are going to institute uh, investigations into what actually happened, okay, and therefore be able to mm. either improve in order to make sure that we save uh, human life but also do more civil police military relations mm. to ensure that uh, some of these situations um, are managed very well all right thank but, you thank you very much Morrison rakakamba i'm sure you're still trying to explain that conversation to so that the viewer can ex, uh, get okay. to understand your submission but then we do have breaking news coming in from mbali we are following the presidential trail of the incumbent mr President Yuri Kakutam Seveni Twibu Habudwa and Habadziwa is hot on that campaign trail. A very good morning, Habadziwa. What's the latest coming in uh, in Mbali? Habadziwa, if you can hear us, what's the latest coming in from Mbali? Thank you very much, Romeo, and the viewers, wherever you're watching from, we are coming to you from Mbali City to be specific on Republic Street. Uh, just in front of me is uh, the Central Police Station of Mbale. And if you go above like 500 meters, you'll meet uh, the High Court of Mbale. This is where the NRM candidate, Yoweri Museveni, uh, will be starting his trail in uh, Bugisu sub-region. Mbale, you would say, is the headquarter of Bugisu sub-region, located along the highway of um, uh, Malaba, uh, Busia, and then you come to Mbale as you're heading to northern Uganda and uh, south Sudan. 
the politics of Mbale is, um, uh, you, you would say it's double-sided. NRM and the FTC are competing favorably in uh, Bugisu sub-region. But of late, we have also seen the influence of people power here in the, in the region. Uh, before the president comes here, there are demands that are uh, already put down by some of the leaders in Bugisu sub-region. And uh, uh, some of them include uh, uh, construction of uh, regional hospitals in, in, uh, in Bugisu sub-region. Uh, helping them to process their coffee. This area is known for producing uh, a lot of coffee. They also want over 300 kilometers of uh, tarmac in the districts that make up uh, Bogisu sub-region. So we, we, we wait to see whether the NRM candidate, Yoel Museven, will uh, make good of uh, these, uh, these demands from uh, the, the leaders of NRM in Bogisu uh, sub-region. So we are here, uh, the districts of Silonko, the districts of Lambuli, districts of, uh, of uh, Bududa, districts of Manafa, uh, districts of Namisindwa Nami will all converge here in Mbale and meet the NRM candidate, Yoel Museveni, as he continues on his vote hunt in this uh, sub-region. So from here, we will head to Sebei, and then uh, uh, by the close of the week, by the close of, of, of the week, we shall be in Tororo, that is uh, Bukedi sub-region. So that is the situation, Romeo, and the viewers here in Mbale on the first day of uh, Yoel Museveni's trail in Bugisu sub-region. Well, thank you, thank you, thank you very much, my brother Habat Ziwa. Thank you very much, Habat Ziwa. He's reporting live from Bali following the campaign trail of Mr. Tibu Habura. Please continue wearing that face mask and, uh, yeah, one of the contraction of COVID-19. But as far as tear gas is concerned, we know you are absolutely safe. Tear gas doesn't hit anything that looks yellow. Now, uh, Morrison Rakakamba, you were still cynical. explaining to yeah. us uh, some of the <laughs> submissions you were making before we went to Mbale for that update. Well, that was a cynical jibe that you just uh, put Because across. yesterday we saw it in Kumi. No, but, but let me, there were processions, but there was no tears. But let me say uh, this, mm. that Sarah, I think, uh, made a statement mm. uh, suggesting that, you know, a presidential candidate there is no presidential candidate nominated who should be arrested. I no, think, no, 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 no. I, I think what Ugandans should know is that we should not entertain or have a country mm. where anybody or anyone is above the law. Mm -hmm. So if they were SOPs, you know, for COVID, my view is that the implementation of those SOPs mm. uh, should really be across the board. So if you and violate think, SOPs, you should be arrested. So, so let me finish mm. my thought process. Go ahead and then get So this is that why mm. I think that uh, it is wrong, mm. for example, right. to arrest Bobby Wine, uh, okay. Chagurani, mm. and then you leave, uh, for example, Bebe Kuru, who was also holding some processions, you know, walk scot free. I think that creates a challenge for the country. And I have been telling my NRM colleagues that it is very, very wrong because President Museven has showed a very, very good example that he can move steadily, taking care of lives of his supporters, showing responsibility as a leader, holding campaigns, you know, following SOPs. Mr. Teko, but his Mr. Teko Emmanuel, do we have his, pictures from Kumi yesterday when uh, people were mounting processions as the president was making his way to Kumi? We saw some procedures. If you can but, get but, those but, pictures, but his surrogates, mm. you know, his surrogates, you know, under the, you know, they are giving out T-shirts mm. or uh, they are moving around waiting for the president. Mm. I think that those surrogates, um, the leadership of the NRM, mm. should, you know, really issue an ultimatum mm. to the surrogates of the NRM and President Museveni mm. to respectfully take the example of our candidate. I see. And, and I think the police should also seen by the country, not just in word, but in action, you know, arresting or executing, you know, implement, proper implementation of SOPs, no matter those who wear yellow, mm -hmm. who wear red, who wear blue, who wear green, or any other political mm -hmm. uh, paraphernalia or color in, in this country. Mm -hmm. So... I think that's also um, extremely very important. Indeed. Because mm. make no mistake, mm. elections have happened. We saw the super spreaders of Donald Trump in the United States. Mm. COVID remains a clear and present danger mm -hmm. Indeed. Across, across the world. Vaccines are coming, but it remains Indeed. a clear and present danger. Mm. Mara, we heard elections. What Sarah did not tell us is that <laughs> cases <laughs> actually shot up 
did you during those super spreader rallies in Marawi? Yes, they went through. But I think this country, from when they have begun with this COVID in 2020, as a country we have fared a bit well. We have lost lives. Mm -hmm. Very, very sad. But we don't have to lose more lives just because we want to enjoy the emotion that comes with the, with the elections and, and, and the enjoyment and the support. Mm -hmm. And I think the other key issue is that leaders across all the political divide should be responsible. Because if you are a leader, you need to tell the people the hard truth that COVID is there, that COVID kills, that whereas you support me, stay home, watch me on TV, hear me on radio, okay? Take my message. If you are a leader, that is what you should do. Finally, the, the, the rights really that happened is where we began. Mm -hmm. And I said that operational mistakes happened from the side of the police and security agencies. But mm -hmm. I think I would be happy mm -hmm. if I had uh, Honorable Robert Chagurani, I had General Mujishamunta and other presidential candidates talking to their supporters that there is a difference between peaceful demonstration and protesting, mm -hmm. but there is also, you know, something wrong with rioting where people go to root, where people go on the streets with hammers and they are hitting, you know, uh, police, po police officers, there is this lady who was hit by a hammer, and that whoever does that, they are on their own, and that's, they, they, they should answer, answer the charges. Mm -hmm. So whereas we, we, we try to condemn this side and this side, I think there is a responsibility across, but, but when across it the divide. Yes, Morrison Rakamba, yes. but then it seems there is condemnation from government towards opposition when it comes to <laughs> implementing standard operating procedures. We've seen opposition candidates being arrested, but then we've never seen the incumbent being even checked on the issue no, of no, the no, surrogates no. that we are talking about on the streets, no. who are actually on the streets waiting for him to wave and so forth, I, I holding I, procedures I like be, in court I have been day. very, very clear mm. about that and said that police is a state institution Indeed. that is supposed to protect law and order no matter which color anyone puts on or which political persuasion. Mm. So, so I think mm. it is important mm. for the police when they are conducting their All business. Right. I get it. Okay? Mm. To make sure that, you know, they are looking through the, the lenses of, of justice, Indeed. of law and order. Mm -hmm. So if you are putting one here and you're holding a procession, mm. uh, I think it is reasonable mm. that you answer. That's why I was concerned that whereas nobody is above the law, I don't think, if you arrest Chagurani and you leave, uh, I saw I'm giving the example of, of Bebe Kul, cool, but I saw Let's pictures. Let's use President Museveni's supporters and make it, make okay, it easy. Okay, let me make mm. it general. Mm. President Yoel Museveni's surrogates, mm. whoever they are, mm. uh, sorry for, for, for invoking Bebe Kul, cool. I hope you'll forgive me, but if there are other surrogates, and mm. I've seen some pictures Indeed. moving around also with people, mm. is that they are making it hard for President Museveni to make a case, mm. and they are making it hard for our candidate, mm -hmm. President Museveni, who has been very, very disciplined, mm -hmm. following SOPs, uh, you know, as we hold this hybrid right. hybrid election. Morrison, so they are not, yeah. they are not, they are, it's not an advantage for our candidate when they are fighting in a bad life. Yes. Uh, Sarah Birete, he mentions a point, selective application of the law. I thought he would deny it, but then he's conceding with what we are saying, selective application of the law. But then how rife is this practice among our police officers and other security apparatus? I just want to briefly correct two issues Please go ahead. Before, before I come on that. Go ahead. One, I did not say that a presidential candidate is above the law. You didn't, yes. If... For example, and I will use the exact example of what happened on Wednesday. Honorable Chagrin has violated COVID gui guidelines. Allegedly they violated mm. because he was arrested with his mask. Mm. So the, the, the question that it then raises, if Honorable Chagrin has, uh, has violated guidelines issued to him as a candidate right. by electoral commission, what is expected of electoral commission as the institution presiding over elections. All candidates sign up to the code. No, of course, Justice Biawaka had, had forgotten to give them the code of conduct approved by parliament. They signed it up, you know, later after. 
So, and, and, and really a, a justice of, of his stature is expected to be more organized on, on legal issues other than firefighting. So you have a situation where these candidates have signed a code of conduct. They have received the guidelines on nomination. Everything has been clear and highlighted to them. If they violate these guidelines, the Electoral Commission is supposed to summon them. Summon them, warn them, suspend their campaigns. This is what is expected to happen in an election. And we have a body in charge of that, a constitutional body. But given, you know, I want to briefly also comment on the double standards on SOAPs, especially mm. by NRM. Mm. And it's unfortunate that we are losing NRM leaders and political appointees to COVID more than any other section of the political leadership. It is very unfortunate. Maybe you haven't heard about them. No, 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 no. I, I'm talking about the leaders who make news. Mm. So if an opposition MP died, it, it would not be a secret. But we have heard. It's very unfortunate, really. Mm. And everybody should observe so, so I'm talking of that level of political Indeed. leadership mm. and appointees like RCCs, mm. you know, media center. It's very unfortunate mm. because, you know, we should all prevent COVID. And this is part of the double standards exhibited by the leadership in this country as if wearing yellow makes you immune to a pandemic. We saw a situation where Honorable Ruth Acheng was the first to openly violate COVID guidelines on a campaign trail. Very unfortunate. Mama Ruth Acheng had, you know, she was known as Mama COVID. She was she, taking us as a nation very well in preventing a pandemic. She was the very first person to violate COVID guidelines. And what did the president do? Forgive her. She got excited. You know, elections. That was part of the presidential address. Unfortunate. Very unfortunate. Go to the NRM primary elections. All COVID SOPs guidelines were violated. All, including their method of voting. Very laughable in a situation of a pandemic. Do they talk about that? Nobody wants to talk about that. Countrywide. Mm -hmm. Violation of COVID. No masks. No social distancing. We all saw what happened. Nobody condemned that. But when a procession joins Bob Wine, who is wearing his mask? As an individual, he's observing. Soaps. But I wish... Uh, no, 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 no. Let me finish. You're going to he was arrested with a, a mask. Mm. True or false? True. But because there is no control of the public, there is no control... There are no masks. We shouldn't shy away from the fact that a rural person does not have a mask. There are no masks. So are we saying that poor people must suspend their right of access to information because the people in charge of giving them masks have absconded? Hmm. Go ahead. We, we need these questions answered. So, but going back to your question, hmm. how is a candidate above the law who have answered that? Hmm. Selective application of the of law. The, of right. course, I have hmm. explained it. Hmm. Even the president will come here and apologize for his cadres. Forgive them. Yet his cadres are dying. Has he talked about it? Has he? That is the level of the double standards and the use of SOPs to repress Section 8, 8 of the Public Order Management Act to violate political and civil rights in this country. It's like, Sora Bireta, you're saying that uh, the, magnitude of, of the magnitude of COVID-19 that we are grappling with right now doesn't warrant the SOPs we are seeing now. No, 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 no. Everybody must follow SOPs. Mm. I would do, it's just a selective I would application of the SOPs. If we were following SOPs mm. as given by World Health Organization, mm. we have an irregular SOP of curfew mm. that we are following in this country that does not augur well with the situation of campaign. I would be happier mm. if we resorted to the SOPs as issued by World Health Organization of wearing a mask, everybody wearing a mask mm. in public, Everybody social distancing, avoiding overcrowding, and if possible, avoiding public gatherings. Mm. I would be very happy. And we should all get involved in preventing the spread of COVID-19. Maurice Orakakamba? Yeah, no, you see, I, I, I think for, for us to be really genuine uh, actors mm. who love this country, Indeed. 
is that even when we are making um, these arguments, mm. is that we really need to be honest to the extent that where we see a mistake, mm. we actually mention it. Indeed. I have been very, very clear that it is a bad watch, not easy to see. When you see some NRM surrogates right. claiming to be campaigning for NRM, you know, frouting COVID regulations, and by that, really impacting negatively on a very careful, a very responsible campaign of President Museveni, who has been extremely, really very, very respectful of COVID guidelines. Therefore, to that extent, I have seen you showing pictures of some of those surrogates mm. making mistakes. Yes. Mm. She was saying Bobby Wine was putting on, you a know, mask. a mask. Mm. But there are all these videos all over the place, and NTV, you definitely have them in your archives. And I think you need to put them there. <laughs> Where, when he was in Busia, when he was in Mbari, and in all those places, moving in the crowds, dancing on the top of the car. I said he was without, wearing a mask when he was arrested. Without, you mean these pictures right there? These are even, no, actually those are not the pictures. These are where he's singing and in the middle without a mask. Uh, at least uh, those are some of them. But they are even, you know, grim, grim ones. So I, I think it is very, this is why I'm saying it is important. That across all the leadership, because you cannot be, because these are leaders. Honorable Chagurani is a leader in his own right and is a presidential mm -hmm. candidate. General Montu is, and all these are leaders. They should come out. And lead, advise their supporters, mm. hold their, if they were being chased out of radios, of television, that would also be a concern. Because mm. I think we have the media, we have the internet, this is where they should be passing the message. Mm. Or they should be holding meetings, just like President Museven holds meetings, people socially distanced, putting on masks, you know, coming in, coming into the meeting venues where there is soap, there is sanitizer. That is what should happen. So as a country, it is really very sad. And Morrison, it seems, like, it seems like the behavior of the opposition is actually a replica of what they are seeing happening from the other side, which so is if the they, NRM. No, no, no. Would, you, would you agree, Sarah Romeo, Pinedi, Just a that, second, Romeo. Go ahead. If they want to even be better leaders mm. and show that it is actually them mm. who have you know, a better message mm. and are more responsible, so therefore they should be trusted with the leadership of Uganda mm -hmm. because the other side is misbehaving, mm. For us, we are handling this campaign responsibly. Mm. So, choose us. Don't choose NRM. That is what I would think. But if they want to be a replica of what they are trying to fight, <laughs> I think absolutely that's, Sir, I've that's a misnomer. Sir, I've <laughs> talked to some of the political analysts and they contain the behavior of the opposition right now. The non-adherence to the standard SOPs is simply because that's what they are seeing on the other side of the NRM. Zero adherence. So, so they, they want say, to be like NRM. If the NRM is not adherent to the SOPs, like mm -hmm. there is no COVID-19, why should we? No, no. Uh, let, let me go back to the how did we develop conferences yeah, right. against, against mm -hmm. the SOPs. During lockdown, where every Ugandan I thought really was determined to preventing the spread of COVID, mm. we saw the massive violation of human rights. People beaten, people brutalized, pregnant women beaten on border borders. At the beginning of lockdown, there was no right of access to health. You know, sick people beaten, some people dying in homes. So we had these reports mm. of human rights violations. We were not in an election. During the easing of lockdown, we saw the double standards. Right. If you are connected, if you're what, you know, you can find your way, whether you're violating SOPs or not. Uh, 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 and Uganda saw this. We are not in campaign. And, and we thought we would not even have elections because that was really the first thinking we had as a, as a nation. We thought elections would be postponed in the interest of saving lives. But, but uh, we had uh, overriding political interests and, uh, and of course, failure to, to create a situation mm. to enable for the postponement of elections. But that came much later in, in June. So from February to May and beginning of June, we had a population that later after the easing of lockdown had to choose between a right to survive today, as in get a meal, 
because of the starvation during lockdown, especially many people are in the informal sector, that we are in homes without food. We saw a semblance of course distribution, selective distribution of food. Large parts of Kampala and the work so vulnerable teams received some food, but for about one or two weeks, the food that was given, it was not enough even to last those people a month or so. So if you, that situation of easing of lockdown and the people saying like, we must survive today. If I'm to die of COVID, choosing between COVID and hunger, that's where we dropped the first zeal to, mm. to, to observe the SOPs. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, you will have your mm. time. Go ahead. Then we saw the opening of, of markets, the crowding in Owino. Mm. This had nothing to do with campaigning. People struggling to pass, people. So we had citizens were faced with a choice of survival between hunger today and COVID. And many of them abandoned the, the SOPs. We saw this on the streets. You have the videos of Owino. And we are all wondering and saying, how come, you know, how are these people? Then the debate of herd immunity started. How are they surviving? Because for two months, everybody was worried about the crowning downtown. But we had no spike until after some time. So that's where the, 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 the idea of soaps and looking at soaps like a violation and, you know, that's where we lost it as a nation. We did not move that journey properly well because of the high-handedness during COVID lockdown. Mm -hmm. So coming from that now, we are ushered into a campaign season. And it's also important to note that public gatherings and, and full easing of lockdown was stopped on a directive that masks should be distributed. Mm -hmm. Have we ever got those masks? Who is going to answer those questions? So now you have a fully fledged campaign, and the massive campaign we had as a country was for NRM primaries. Countrywide, did people observe SOPs? My answer is no. Yeah, they did not. Mm. So you are, we are building onto that momentum. Mm. So for an ordinary person who might not even have chosen a candidate to vote for, mm. or even knows a candidate they, they prefer, mm. who watched the NRM primaries? Who watched the, the, the lockdown and how it was treated? Who is now watching the campaigns? Do they even know that they are not supposed to appear in public without masks? Do they know? Based on the example. And do they have said. the means? Mm. So ideally, she's trying to explain to you why... The journey we've the, walked. Yeah, the, why the people have been acting the way they've been acting. Because of well, the way we've been seeing the uh, implementation of the SOPs. It is serious, yes, when opposition is in play. But when the government and their loyalists are in exercising well, their political mandate, we didn't see the heavy-handedness of the police uh, trying to... I, I think the other the aspect thing. that mm. we miss is... I think there is a tendency to objectify Ugandans. Because Ugandans, by the way, are really very intelligent people. They discern mm. and they take a message. My, in my view, I think the biggest investment in the fight against COVID is real investment in information. For people to know, don't gather, you know, social distance, wear a mask, okay? Mm. Those are the, for me, those are the core messages. Mm -hmm. And what I called for and many other people was that most of the investment should go into those perspectives. And when you listen to all the radios across the country, every other day, there are those messages. Mm -hmm. And overall, by the way, Uganda was praised uh, at the beginning, you know, of, of, of this fight. Yeah. You know, for, for, fight, for, for fighting, you know, vehemently mm -hmm. against uh, this COVID. Mm -hmm did lockdowns in time, shut the airport on time, advised the Ugandans, you know, and, and the president was holding those, you know, meetings and speaking to Ugandans directly, you know, to, to really take care. And I can tell you that many Ugandans really listened. And to Sarah's point, I'm happy she's conceding that, Uganda is among the 10 most effective countries in terms of response to COVID. And Comparatively, if you look at Kenya, if you look at all these places, comparatively, I think it is important to say that we, have, we are doing well. But having said that, we have lost lives. And every mm. single life matters. 
we can't lose more. We can't lose anyone else. Okay? So this is why, across all the leadership, mm -hmm. political leadership, religious leadership, school leadership, home leadership, traditional leadership, and all other formations, we should all pass on a message. Mm -hmm. We should all be relentless. Indeed. We should all be clear that COVID remains a clear and present danger and that people should be careful. But Morrison Murakakamba, out of the 181 people who succumbed to COVID-19, over 60 were killed by security apparatus who are trying to enforce COVID-19 SOPs. What do you have to In say about days. that? Not, not just <clears throat> they're all tallying. If you add the 45 from last week and the people who have kept on dying as a result of uh, police officers enforcing SOPs. But I don't know whether those are official numbers. 45 are official. But if you look I'm at saying, the number of people who have died between March and saying, now, it's even bigger. All I'm, say, all I'm saying is nobody should die. Whether it is elections, whether it is COVID. Mm. We have one singular country called Uganda mm. that we all love. And we should live harmoniously and peacefully. Mm. And it is the responsibility of all the leadership mm -hmm. to call on their supporters, to call on the citizens to really behave and believe really in a law and order. Because when the country becomes lawless, <laughs> my brother, mm -hmm. I don't think me and Sarah would even be here Indeed. if there was no law and order. There can never be business if there is no law and order. There can never be school if there is no law and order. If you are parent for sick, and, you, and there is a riot in Kampara, you are not going to be able to take that parent or your child the to, to the question is, Maurice So, so the point I'm what really is making, the price I'm re of the, that law and order? The point I'm really People dying on the streets. The point I'm really mm. making is that across all the board, all Ugandans, whether in government or outside mm. government, violence should not be really acceptable, mm. should not be tolerated. And this is why I also said that the police and security agencies also need to look on the inside and look at those operational failures and be able to transparently tell the country mm. really what happened. But also leaders who could have been involved, you know, in organizing or mobilizing some of these riots is that they also need to condemn the, the, the rioting. Whereas constitutionally, everybody really has a right. Do we have anybody constitutionally. Well, well, you talked about mobilization of the rights, but the candidate was in jail. So how did Const he do that in Alphania? Oh. But, but the way you are speaking about it, it mm. is like, uh, it, it's a Bob Wine. It's do a, we know any leader it's, it's who, a Bob who Wine participated issue. in mobilizing? No. I'm not saying mm. it's a Bob Wine issue, but I am saying mm. there could be, <laughs> there could be those who could have mobilized. If that is the case, because I'm not the the chief of intelligence that I have that information. If there could be, those ones really, they should stop. It was just simply instantaneous anger. But if, if it is mm. instantaneous and you are a leader and people have moved out instantaneously, mm. okay, mm. with hammers mm. uh, to, to strike down the police officers, have moved out with stones, there is this uh, uh, Justice Mutoni whose car was, was hit. Mm -hmm. Many cars so, so the were hit. Yes, so then, the, the, then there were roadblocks, there were roadblocks, you know, where people were, you know, collecting some level of taxes. I think they were trying to form a state within the state. So I think all those situations and shenanigans, mm -hmm. in my view, should be condemned by all the leaders. But... I have seen some groups celebrating, you know, you know, heroes, you know, who moved out. I don't know whether you have seen that kind of messaging. They are moved now calling them heroes, what? those who are rioting and, and doing some of those things. Yeah, they're talking about people who died during the chaos. Those who died during the chaos, I think we should... The heroes we are should, the dead. Can you listen? Mm. No, finish, can finish. You listen? Go ahead. Okay. Sorry, today, what's going on? Morrison, now? finish. Mm. So I'm saying those who died, mm. you know, as a country, we should mourn. Mm. We should pray for their souls and that the, may their souls you know, rest inside mm -hmm. the gates of heaven and peace, now, now, and yeah. that no one else, no one else. No one else should also die. Should we should die. also, it should be the point of conversation should as die. we crown this whole conversation. Yes, should so die in those Let's come those up with some recommendations on how best we can yes. create a harmonized political environment so that we don't lose more people. Share with us some of those recommendations. Okay, yeah, I, as I share my recommendations, I want to agree with the mm. Rakakamba here that nobody should die a, sens a senseless yes, murder. Yeah. True. Because if you look at the conduct of security agencies, it, not anywhere founded in law. I, I saw General Tumwine Rebaring to explain that the police can't shoot anybody. There's mm. no such thing legally. 
Mm. There is no legal basis for that. The, the, the principles of rule of law and respect for human rights mm. apply even in situations mm. of law of war and rights. high mm. aggression. Mm. But as I conclude, one is that the security forces should follow the law. Be, even themselves, mm. they are not above the law. They should follow the law. Their work is, is established in laws and several acts of parliament. They should not operate outside the law. They don't need to use excessive force. Two, the people expressing their whatever, protesting or whatever, they, they should be civil. Really, hooliganism is not, has no place in any organized society or democratic society. Mm -hmm. The brutal attacks on media, even under war, in a situation of war, media is given safe passage. Media, children that were shot, they are given safe passage, even in a situation of war and highest mm. levels of, mm. of confrontation. So there is no need for, for the security agencies to start harassing the media who are doing their work. Mm. Deployments of non-informed, you know, non-uniformed security operatives mm. is, is really, uh, and this has been characteristic of the regime. We have had to work squad. We have, so it is not a new invention. The, this regime usually uses mm hooligans and arms them to shoot people on the streets. We saw Chivoko's court. For them, they had sticks. We have seen uh, the likes of Chitata, Sobi, uh, operating illegal, uh, you know, g uh, safe houses. So it, it is the, the character of part of what the security uses. Mm. It is illegal and it should be stopped. Mm. Then uh, also to, to note that really under elections, we, we all need Uganda beyond elections. Let's all be peaceful. Mm. Let's all participate and, and, and exercise our democratic rights, but in a peaceful manner. Okay, recommendations, Morrison, in a minute. We've run that out of time. It is possible in Uganda to have, you know, not processions, but to demonstrate peacefully and to show, uh, you know, affection to a candidate, you know, peacefully. And there is evidence. When Robert Chagurani, a.k.a. Bob Wine, won in Chadondo, East, he led a procession of thousands and thousands of supporters from mm. his constituency up to parliament. Let's focus on like there was the no there America. was no tear gas, there was no any bullet shot. So I think that is president in this country. He, he hadn't if, told us that he was running for if the presidency. All That's leaders, why. Th this is the point. If mm. all leaders, you know, coordinate and engage mm. with the institutions of the state. Mm. I think we can have peaceful coexistence and enjoy this country that we both love. Morrison Rakakamba, the CEO, Agency for Transformation, and Sara Birete, the Executive Director Center for Constitutional Governance. Many thanks, both of you, for having come through to actually dissect these issues that are really contentious. The country really needed to hear this. Thank you very much. And to you, to you at home who has been watching since since 6 30 a.m up to now thank you very much for that undeterred love and support my name is Romy busiku special thanks to my producers colin and arafat studio director teko and manuel dance J, elvis kulubazi on the camera right there we were working since the wee hours to make sure that this show happens and we shall do the same and the following days so that we disseminate information that the country needs in its wholesomeness my name is Romy busiku go out there and make it happen good